Hey guys, welcome back. We got another Ahmadidad video. This time he's tackling the topic of racism and he's gonna be explaining the best way or the best system to get rid of racism. So yeah, let's hear what he has to say with this one. So he says, how be it? When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak. Now if I quote this, you see if you ask any Christian missionary, who is the spirit of truth? He says the Holy Ghost. Yeah. He will tell you it's the Holy Ghost. Ask him. You got the Holy Ghost? He said yes. Your church? He said yes. Every church and denomination in Christendom claim the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit, they got it. You ask the Jehovah's Witness, you got it? He said yes. Seventh day Adventist, you got it. The Anglican, he's got it. The Lutheran, he's got it. The Roman Catholic, everyone. 1,000 sects and denominations among the whites of South Africa in my country, they got it. And 3,000 among the blacks, sects and denominations, they got it. What the Holy Ghost? I'm asking, what did the Holy Ghost tell you in 2,000 years? Which Jesus already didn't give it to you in so many different words. Give me one. Only one new thing, new thing. Jesus, I have yet many. I said in English, many means more than one. He will guide you into all truth. I said all in English means more than one. I don't want more than one. I want only one. And for 40 years I'm asking, learned men of Christianity gave me one new thing that the Holy Ghost gave you in 2000 years to any church. Any church. Bring it. I want to hear. There isn't. I said we have problems. We have problems. The biggest problem is race. In the world today, race, racism. We are all racist. I said all, we are all racist. Nobody is exempt from this devilishness, this sickness of racism. No man, how much we boast. We Muslims might say that we are the least racist. But you can't say we are pure from that sickness. Nobody is pure. Is the Jews said somebody, we are the children of Abraham. We are the children of David. The rest of the world, we are the children of Israel. The rest of the world was Goim. What is Goim? Ask him. Gentile. What is Gentile? Unclean. Filthy, dirty, uncircumcised people. You. Pig eaters. You. That's how he is. The rest of the world. The Arab, you know what the Arab said? He says we are the Arabs. You know what it means? We are an eloquent people. You see, in my language, the Arab says, I can give you a hundred synonym for a sword. I can give you a hundred synonym yeah, for a horse. So in your language, how many can you give? Language. Maybe half a dozen? Yeah. Half a dozen for a horse. Half a, half a dozen for a sword. He said, you see, compared to me, you are dumb. So he says, you are ajam. Ajam means dumb. We are the Arabs, the eloquent people, and the rest of the world is dumb, like animals. That's his, that's, that's his racism. And my people in India, we say we are the Aryans, we are the master race. And the rest of the India are achut, untouchables. <laughs> ask the British, they'll tell you something about themselves as I can say that. Ask the Germans, they'll tell you something as I can say that. This is man, any man, like to, every man. Like to be so sickness, we are all sick. Mean to be each other, huh? Now how to eliminate the sickness? Yeah, that's the you see, it's that's very so easy important. for anybody to talk about the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. Very easy. There is but only one father, our creator, Lord and cherisher, God Almighty. And we are all his children. That's talk. 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 How do you implement it? System. You require a system. Talking is easy. Preaching is easy. How do you implement that brotherhood? Judaism hasn't got it. Christianity hasn't got it. Jesus Christ himself, he discriminated in his own time. He says, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I have only come for the Jews. He's telling his disciples, go ye not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not, but go ye rather unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's what he did. Himself in his lifetime, he never preached to a single non-Jew in his lifetime. A Greek woman, she had a problem. She, her daughter was suffering some incurable sickness. So she brings her daughter to him. He said, Master, heal my daughter. So he turns his face away. 
She goes on the other side, says, Master, please, drowning men clutches at straws, drowning women do the same, my daughter's life is at stake, please help her. So the disciples say, look, this woman, she won't let us, let us go. She'll pester us, our life out of her, heal her daughter. So he says, do not throw the bread of the children to the dogs. These Greeks are dogs. My children are the Jews. My, what I brought, the spiritual blessing. He's not talking about bread. He's talking about spiritual blessings. Goodness, is, that is for my children, the Jews. These rest of them, the Greeks and the Romans and all are dogs. You mustn't throw, do not throw that which is holy unto dogs. Do not throw pearls before swine. I'm asking who are the dogs and who are the swines? The non-Jew. That's his teaching. Now man, you say, now we open our churches to all races now, after 300 years in South Africa, for the first time, they say, now we open our churches to all people. After 300 years. For 300 years, you can't have a black bishop. You had to rule every Christian. In Indonesia, in India, wherever the white man must rule. You held the reins. Because you were racist. Now, Jesus had given it to you. He said, no, my children and the dogs are separate things. In his lifetime, now this woman, she is a drowning person. Her daughter's life is at stake. So she says, Master, even the dogs have crumbs from the master's table. That was too much for him. So he said, give her the crumbs. And the daughter was healed. The crumbs of the blessings. His food, his bread, was for his own children, the Jews. But I say system, even whatever you claim, you require a system to change the hearts and minds of people. Now, the Muslim is the only guy who has the system. Oh, really? Five times a day, the Mu'azzin, the caller goes on top of the minaret and he shouts in a loud sonorous voice, it's Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest. He repeats it four times. So Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. He said, I bear witness that there is no other object to worship but Allah, God Almighty. He's the only one who deserves to be worshipped. He repeats it twice. He said, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. He said, I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. He's not God, he's not his son. Don't make a mistake like the others have done. They made the prophets into gods. They made the heroes into gods. Don't you do that. The Muslim is warned. And Alhamdulillah, this sickness hasn't got us yet. Of worshipping Muhammad as a God. Mm, there isn't such thing. He repeats it twice. Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. If you accept these two fundamentals, that there is but one God and Muhammad is his messenger. What is the message? He continues, Hayya ala salat, this has come to prayer. Hayya ala salat, this has come to prayer. Hayya ala falah, this has come to success. Because this is real success. That you remind yourselves about your duties and obligations towards your creator and your duties and obligations towards your fellow human beings. If you want to be successful, there is no other way. And he winds up the call by saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allah is still the greatest, Allah is still the greatest. Whether you come or you don't come, you are not going to lower him in his exaltation, in his majesty, in his glory, he will ever remain supreme. And the final words of warning, the Mu'azzin gives, the caller gives, Ke la ilaha illallah, that there is no other object of, but, of worship but Allah. You can carry on worshipping your man gods, your women gods, your money gods, but remember this, that the only one who deserves to be worshipped is Allah. And the Muslim hearkens to the call. Holy Prophet Muhammad said that when you stand up for prayer, you must not leave gaps for the devil to get in between you and your brother. This devil that Muhammad وسلم, was talking about was not the guy we see in our art galleries. In my country, in Durban, there's, in the art gallery, there's a huge painting by some great artist. You see in that painting a beautiful woman with wings, well proportioned, and she's got a wand in her hand and she's directing the devil to go to hell. And in the picture you can see the devil flying off. Ready complexion, red, 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 with horns and sharp ears and a tail with a barbed hook. And you see the hellfire in the distance. In the picture you can see all that. <laughs> I said, Muhammad wasn't talking about that. A devil like that with a tail with a barbed hook. I said, if you see one, you run for dear life. Me too, I run for dear life. <laughs> you stand there and reason with him? You listen to him? Never! Devil comes in a beautiful form. Allah makes things appealing to you so you get caught. He comes in that form, you run. run. <laughs> Muhammad wasn't talking about that. He was talking about you, yourself. 
He was talking about you. Your racial pride, your arrogance, your riches. I am white, he's black. I am rich, he's poor. That devil must not be allowed to come in between you and your brother. No gaps left. This is what Muhammad, five times a day, we get together and we finish off our prayer. Go and watch them at, in the mosque. Sometimes prayer time. Ask the Muslim friends if you know. They say, look, we want to see how you people pray. And you watch. When they finish off, they say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So peace and blessings of God to everybody to the right of me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So peace and blessings of God to everybody to the left of me. When I did this, I see an African there. When I did that, I see a Chinese here. When I did it again, next time I see a white man there. Next time I see a colored guy there. I see an Eskimo this side. So in my heart and mind, this is my brother, this is my brother, right. this is my brother, this is my brother. System, system of eliminating this racism. We are still racist. The sickness is there, it hasn't left us. But the system makes you the least racist. I'm st still ashamed to say that we are not free from the sickness. Whether you are a Pakistani, or you are a Bangladeshi, or you are a Punjabi, or you are a Turk, or you are an Arab, I say we are all sick. The system is there to eliminate these feelings of racism out of you. Then on a Friday, bigger gathering. Then once in a lifetime you go for pilgrimage, and there you see, this is the Chinese, Muslims. And the guy from Ethiopia is black as coal, my brother. And the guy from Turkey with blonde hair and blue eyes, my brother. I didn't imagine all this. To me, all Muslims are so look like me. Now I see an Ethiopian is a Muslim and the Madrasi is a Muslim and the Chinese is a Muslim. Ah, my brother, my brother, my brother. A system of bringing people together and working out this poison of racism. All right, guys. So Ahmed Dida, he really touched on some good points and. I agree with the fact that for everybody on the planet, they, they have experienced some form of racism or have sh held a racist view or had displayed some type of racism in some way. And you know, he says that this system makes uh, Muslims the least racist, maybe. Maybe not, you know? It, it is good when you can recognize that, hey, all their people from different backgrounds, they may look differently. Uh, they, they're your brother, they're your sister, it's great, you know? You know, brothers in humanity, sisters in humanity, because we're human first. Now, I do have to say, though, that surprisingly, the uh, most amount of blatant overt racism that I've actually experienced came from Muslims. And it's largely for the fact that, you know, I'm black, my wife is white, and uh, the comments that we get sometimes online, it's predominantly from Muslims about like, oh, race, and you shouldn't intermix and things like that. And, oh, you, you know, just all these type of comments. So I'm like, interesting, Amdidat said that Islam has a system to um, make them less racist, but, um, that really hasn't been my experience. And not to say that it's just Muslims that I've experienced racism from, but of other people as well. It's just the most blatant overt racism that I've experienced has been from Muslims. And we also gotta be real with ourselves. You know, I, I've said racist things in the past and uh, have held racist views. And sometimes like the, the, the belief is so tightly held that you don't even think it's racist. You're like, oh, interesting. That's uh, that is kind of racist. That that's very judgmental of me. So I've been doing a lot of work over the past years to actually il really eliminate that. You know, see people for being people, and I've come a long way. Where, um, well, I've never been highly highly racist. Uh, person in the sense that I only stuck to certain people that I hang out with. I've had friends from all different backgrounds, but yeah, what Amadidat is talking about, man, it is really like deeply ingrained in the human fiber, you know, it's, it, it, it's deep, you know. 
So guys, I'm curious to know, have you experienced any form of racism or have you displayed any form of racism in the past that you may be ashamed of? Let me know your experiences down below in the comment section. I think it's a great topic and the more we talk about this and actually recognize really what is going on and how we're actually acting and the things that we're saying about other people is the more that we can catch them and eliminate them and just start speaking love and, and, and peace and, and tolerance, you know, when it comes to, like, why am I going to hate somebody for having a different skin color, coming from a different country, having different customs? Why? Why would I do that? Like, is there any benefit in the long term? I think the greatest success, though, is when I succeed and other people succeed as well, regardless of their culture or color. So that's my two cents on this, guys. I'm going to get on out of here. Thanks for hanging out with me in another video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later.